got converting uh, standard form to slope intercept for linear equations. Very long title. What does that mean? Um, I'm currently in the standard form. And the, uh, I guess the parent function of standard form is usually written like this. Zero is equal to a x, a being the coefficient of that in front of x, uh, plus b y, b being the coefficient in front of y, and then plus uh, the letter c, c being the constant value. Okay, So we have our standard form, and I'm actually going to reverse the order. I like having that stuff on top here, just so it's easier to refer upwards, I find. Okay, so we have our, our standard form, and we've written our equation out. We want the form to read y is equal to mx plus b. Um, let me just put it like this, m and b. Okay, so we need to convert the standard form to the slope-intercept form. So here's your standard, here's your slope-intercept. What do we do? Um, the most prevalent way, or the most common way, is to actually isolate for the y in the equation. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I am going to highlight, in fact, I'll highlight the entire term, negative 2y. I'm going to keep that by itself on one side of the equation, and I'm going to move the other two terms to the other side of the equation. Okay, we'll do it one at a time for simplicity's sake. Um, first, I'll move 5x to the other side. So that becomes 0, because this is positive here, minus 5x is equal to negative 2y minus 10. So you'll notice the negative 2y has stayed on the right side of the equation. I've moved negative 5x to the other. What is 0 minus 5x? 5x. Yeah, negative 5x, that's right. So we've got rid of the zero. The zero being kind of irrelevant here. It's almost like I'm rewriting the same equation. Again, we want to isolate for <coughs> negative 2y. So I now want to move negative 10 to the other side. When I move negative 10 to the other side, what will it become on the other side? Positive 10. That's right. So it becomes positive 10. In fact, I'll highlight those in red so that you can, you can see the, the changes that we made here. Okay. It becomes positive 10 on the other side, and we're still left with negative 2y. We can't collect any like terms because these aren't like terms. This has a variable attached to it. This is a constant. There's nothing I can do. The only thing I can do is isolate for y. So I'm not tactically done. I still have a coefficient in front of here. So actually, though I've highlighted the whole term, that was just to think of it like moving chess pieces from one side to the other. I now want to um, separate or I want to get rid of this coefficient of negative 2. Um, because it's negative 2 times y, in order to do that, I would actually divide by negative 2. And I have to divide each term by negative 2. Think of it like dividing the entire equation by negative 2. I'm going to keep the slope as a fraction. The only thing I'm going to change is a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I'm just going to make this entire thing positive 5 over 2x. Positive 10 divide negative 2 is actually negative 5 is equal to y. So I now have a y equals mx plus b. Uh, my y is kind of on the opposite side we're used to seeing. I'm just going to flip the equation around. y equals 5 over 2x um, minus 5. And this is your y equals um, mx plus b. So our b value, our y-intercept, is negative 5. And the slope is 5 over 2. Okay, wonderful. That is technically one method. There's a whole other method we could do. And this one is, the method I've shown you right now is a nice method because it's, you know, it's all one long step in order to do it. Okay, I'm going to section off this page here. Another way you can do it is I can kind of give you two quick formulas to solve this. Okay, one of them is that m, when referencing the standard form here, your m value, if you notice, when we go down here, it becomes 5 over 2. m is actually a, or I should say actually negative a, m is equal to negative a divided by b, okay? So what does that mean for us as a formula, okay? Well, our a value was 5, and our b value was negative 2. So I could say m is equal to negative um, a was 5 over, and our b value was, was negative 2, negative 2. Well, negative 5 divided by negative 2, that is equal to 5 over 2. And then, lo and behold, I already have my slope. 
to find the B value. The B value, the, I'm not gonna give you a, a straightforward formula here. Well, actually I could. I could do this. Um, the B value is equal to, let me quickly think about this, C divided by, negative C divided by, there you go, divided by B. Very, very similar. Divided by B. Okay, so these are two quick formulas. Instead of that whole very long process, we can just apply these two formulas. Um, what does that mean for us? Well, our C value was negative 10. So I have negative, negative 10. So that's going to be something there that we're going to have to deal with. And B, like we said, was negative 2. Negative 2. Negative, negative 10. Do you know how I write that? No, no. Wouldn't it just be positive 10? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was getting at. Um, it would just be positive 10. Divide negative 2. Well, those actually simplify. Our B value is then equal to negative 5. That's right. Negative 5. And now that I have these two, I can write my equation out. Y is equal to, remember, it's mx plus b. Well, that means we get y is equal to m was 5 over 2 x, and our b is negative 5, so we just write in negative 5, and lo and behold, those two things, I'll highlight them here, and I'll use yellow. Those two things are the same. So we got the exact same thing, no matter which of the two roots we used, okay? So you can use a formula root, or you can isolate for y to change something from standard to slope-intercept 